Welcome to United by Trucks. Today, we're back on UBT K5. We're bending up some brake lines, buttoning up the chassis, and getting this thing ready to roll to LST in about mm, four and a half weeks. So we're back in the shop today. This is the new How's It Doing Garage UBT headquarters. And we're not gonna give you a full tour of this thing yet because, well, it still needs some work. So we're gonna bring a full tour to you via video soon. But today, we're bending up some brake lines, we're buttoning up the chassis so that we can get this thing geared up to set the body down in probably the next seven to 10 days. So we got Rick here from SQRBDY, Mike's here obviously from How's It Doing Garage, and Mike's gonna be giving us a tutorial on how to bend and flare some brake lines since I've actually never done that on an entire chassis. So we're gonna be doing that today. We're gonna bring it all to you right here in this episode. So let's get started. Rick, what's up, man? What's up? Man, we've seen you two weekends straight. Two in a row. This is awesome. You'll be sick of me. Nah, negative. What's up, dude? Hey, how are you doing? Tell these folks we got a new shop. We do. We've got a new domicile. A new domicile. It's the uh, How's It Doing <laughs> at UBT Garage. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bad joke. I'm in the front. Mike is gonna be helping, uh, helping get this thing done. We had to call in the big guns, as they say, to uh, make sure we get this thing done on time. So Mike's gonna be helping us do that. We're gonna start with some brake lines today. So this is the current state of the chassis. We, as you can see in the last video, we got, uh, got the motor out of the donor, into the chassis. We've been cleaning up on it a little bit, just pulling the old wire and harness off, getting all the old oil cooler lines. We still gotta pull some trans cooler lines on it, but I was waiting until my other trans cooler set up um, and lines come in. So anyway, we're gonna be running some brake lines. Today, this is the kit, the brake line kit that we're using. So we're gonna be using the quarter inch copper nickel line for the drums, and we're gonna be using the 3 16 copper nickel line for the remainder of the truck um, and for the disc. So we ordered this from the stop shop off of Amazon. It came with 25 foot of each uh, each diameter hose and fittings, I believe, but I don't know where those are. So gotta find those. But right now, since we're just, we've just we just moved into the shop, we kind of got this little temporary set up. The Husky Toolbox I bought from, brought from the house and the Bessie Vice that we're gonna be using to uh, flare the brake lines. All right, Mike, so walk us through what we're using today so we can, uh, we can show these guys how to make some brake lines. All right, so what we got is we got the Eastwood flaring tool. Um, I love this little dude. I've used it a ton. I've never, never had an issue with it. And it's, it's fairly cheap. I think it's a little over $200. And uh, you could buy a different uh, die set for it if you wanted to do like JSC fittings and stuff like that. But these are just the brake flaring dies. Then we have the Eastwood tool uh, chamfer and deburring tool to use with brake lines for cleaning your lines after you cut them. And then I just have the El Cheapo Husky small pipe cutter works sweet great for what we're doing and then we've got some 3 16 and quarter inch copper nickel brake line and give it that extra flare and then we also have uh i don't even know who made this thing <laughs> brake line bending tool all right got on summit racing sweet also love them guys so you really don't need a whole i mean you got to have the right equipment but you don't really need a whole lot of equipment to make yeah. these you brake don't lines need work, to right? have like the world's most expensive tools to make uh brake lines it's it's mostly the process is the deal yeah you have to do the process in order to get a good brake line but if you want you know if you get in skip the process you're gonna end up with like a crappy flare so yeah one that just didn't invert essentially yeah. it didn't tuck back in on itself and what happened here is uh, we got ahead of ourselves and didn't do the process, so it screwed up the fitting. Yeah, show us what a good one looks like. So then if you, you know, you take your time and do it right, you end up with a good flare and you're good to go. Yeah. Because nothing's worse than having a leaking fitting and burning all the paint off your chassis because it's got brake fluid all over it. Yeah, no doubt about it. Let's just dive right in and show them how to make a brake line on this setup. So first what you wanna do is you wanna prepare your line this we've already cut this you know cutting a line is pretty self-explanatory but once you cut your line the act of cutting it is going to mush some of the brake line material inside the brake line here get a picture of that yeah i see it 
So what you want to do is you want to clean that out. Notice the time I point the line at the ground so stuff don't go up inside the line. Just give the chamfer tool a couple of turns in there. Clean it out. So then your inside's all nice and clean. And then you take your outside chamfering tool and give it a couple little turns on there. Yeah, that one looks really good now. So then Eastwood's got a whole tutorial on the internet about how to use their brake clearing tool. Yeah, and I'll link that down in the description so everybody can see that. But it's kind of self-explanatory. You just stick the right size dies in here for whatever you're doing. Normally you wouldn't be dealing with a 20 foot coil of brake line. But, you know. <laughs> but I bought a kit and that's how I came. So that first setting basically just gets it lined up with the end of the die. Yep, sets it in there, make sure the brake line's in the right spot and everything, then you tighten it down and now it's locked in there and it's, it is ready for the first operation of making a brake line. You just yank your handle back. Yeah, and our vise is gonna move because this, like I said, this is all makeshift this morning, but and then you move certainly it. doing the job. Operation numeral dose. You just give it another yank on the old handle. And then you have a nice flare. And one thing we talked about doing, and we're going to do this from the end, but you all, you always want to make sure that your fitting is on the brake line yeah. before you do, before you go to flaring it and doing that whole deal. So yeah. we'll obviously slide hours on from the end, but this little Eastwood tool makes all that happen. Yeah. I mean, it, it is, it is really, really cool to see this thing work and such a good flare. Right. And one other thing you got to kind of worry about is you got to have quite a bit of brake line straight to flare it so if you have like a close bend that's close to the fitting what you kind of have to do is map out your line mm -hmm. flare it with your fitting on there and then bend it okay because if you put the fitting on there flare it and then bend it you won't be able to get the fitting all the way around the bend because it won't fit up. yeah of course that makes a lot of sense okay all right so what's next we'll start making a brake line for the rear end and uh work the way to the front and see where the day takes us again. all right man let's do it so this is the wheel cylinder drum side line old line part of the fitting that we took out so mike is working to match it right now i think we've got it pretty well matched but you guys probably know that the brake line will run in to the fitting right there at the wheel cylinder on the back of the drum, on the back of the backing plate. So that line will run right in there and run right across the saxle. This is the one end of the line we just made for the rear axle. So just to give you guys an idea of what that's looking like. And now we'll put it in and make it look bad. Ooh. So copper nickel brake line is really, really easy to bend. You can, you can bend it with your hand. If you're dealing with a steel brake line, you'll need the brake line bending tool where a copper nickel line bends really, really easy just by hand, so. Sweet. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna run right there across the axle. Rick's already got his little mock-up arch going there. Gonna run right to the other side. And then we'll start running lines toward the front. Rick, you having fun yet? Oh yeah, loads. Loads. <laughs> All right, so we currently have the line running down and across like that. We're gonna build a a little tab right in the area where Rick's hand is. There. Come up over the axle. It's Martin Dunn. Go up in there somewhere. Yeah. Okay. We've got the, uh, the rear line essentially run, mocked up. We're going to be tying in the soft hose that runs over to the frame rail here. Getting ready to run the quarter inch line up to the front so that we can then begin mocking up the cross member line, which is, in my opinion, a pain in the butt. Thankfully, okay. we got these two studs so just, just making it happen. It there, it. So this is some of those advanced Rolling. tactics when you're messing with brake line. One of these days when we get that money, we're gonna buy a brake line straightener. Ooh, but for now. The guys on Wayne's World bought the licorice dispenser. We're buying <laughs> brake line stretcher thing a brake line straightener hey guys are, hey man i need you to restore my 57 all right bring that junk in here <laughs> got you we'll stretch that thing out son make it right oh you got a blasting cabinet yeah we ain't got no air compressor but we got well, we a blasting got, cabinet we got no air but we got all the water and yeah. all the sand don't you worry if we don't have an air compressor <laughs> 
Rick comes in here and he blows in his hose and we get it done. <laughs> Also, I got to point out at this time, we got the uh, AZ Pro Performance banner up. It's the first banner up in the shop. And uh, you should go check those guys out, azproperformance.com. They're actually going to be providing the fuel line kit for the LS motor. We're going to be doing a full-blown install video on that, so you'll be seeing it soon. So big thanks to Travis for all that. Super cool dude. He is a super cool dude. What are you doing over here, Mike? Bending this straight line all nice and neat here, you know? So we're starting to run that quarter inch line up to the front. Mike's got us a good bend going there. All right, so there's some new brake line run toward the front all the way up the frame rail. Oh, and we're using our new hoist in here. So we got this thing off the ground a little bit, make it a little bit easier to use. Kind of looks like it's levitating. What do you think, Rick? Yeah, I like it. Yeah, I'm down with it. So now we're running it across this front cross member here instead of the engine cross member under there. Mm -hmm. So we just actually, Rick brought his 87K5 out there. So we went and checked it out while these guys tell secrets. <laughs> you know this camera's recording there, Mike. <laughs> Where'd the pen go again? So we're gonna end up putting a T here from each side, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. front pass, or excuse me, passenger driver side. And then we've got this line here that'll run up to the master. May not be long enough, but might be. So it's going to tee here. Right. You'll run it from. Up, and then it's going to come up the, the, this side of the frame rail, just right. like it does on the factory and go yeah. up. Yeah. So here's what we've got going with the hose running down yeah. to the new caliper. With the banjo fitting, obviously you can see we've got some old crusty stuff going here for when we get this new control arm on. We've got to figure that out. But yeah, this is what we're looking like as of right now. We're going to throw some Texas Speed goodies at this thing eventually, though. Big single. Big single. <laughs> Rick has really learned a lot from Mike today and knows exactly <laughs> the process to get these lines all cleaned up. He also learned that the only way to eat Chick fil A french fries is to take Chick fil A mayonnaise. You squirt it down and then you put pepper in the mayonnaise, smear it up, and that's the only way to eat your flake. That was a Lake House special. Yeah. Welcome. What kind of Welcome. thing is that? Is that what you did at lunch and I didn't notice? That is not what I did, that's what he did. Oh, okay, because <laughs> that sounds super disgusting. <laughs> We're actually gonna finish this up tomorrow, so you will uh you'll see us finishing up this tomorrow, but same video. Say Jack has got the tease. <laughs> He's been a white. What? Is that my mouth? <laughs> Mike and Rick are now gone, and I'm still gonna work on the brake lines here. Mike is has suggested that we use these little clips for the brake lines, which makes a whole lot of sense, obviously. So, showed you a minute ago, but he's already got one kind of mocked up in here. I'm gonna put one here and about every foot and a half all the way to the front. So I'm gonna work on that right now. Just gonna basically drill quarter inch holes with my trusty Milwaukee quarter inch bit. And then we're gonna throw some hardware in there. Okay, so we definitely want a sway bar, but this is the factory sway bar and it doesn't work with our control arm. So I'm gonna take this one off. We're gonna leave these brackets here. Um, and then we're gonna try to figure out what to do on the uh, on the lower bracket on the lower control arm here not sure if we'll get a sway bar back on it before um, before before LST but we might you never know tomorrow we're gonna actually get the whole chassis all completely buttoned up as you can see we've still got bolts that aren't tightened and we're just going to get everything mocked up we got to redo the front bag the way the front bags are mounted so we're going to get that buttoned up as well all right guys so it's day two we're back on ubtk5 so we're going to finish up the brake lines today we're going to start working on the steering we are i don't know we got a couple other things we're doing so it's just mike and i in here today but we made some pretty good progress yesterday. We 
got all the brake lines mocked up. Uh, so we're gonna tie in the axle line to the main line running off the frame rail today. We've got a uh, 3 16 junction block here to tie these three lines in together and have it go up to the master cylinder. Got that sway bar off last night, which we told you about, but we're gonna put in the factory uh, steering and center link. It's actually over here. It's got some upgraded, got some upgraded uh, tie rod ends and um, all the bushings and stuff there. So hopefully that should go back on with no issue. Say hello, Mike. Hello. Say good morning, Mike. Good morning. But say good morning, Mike. Oh, good morning, Mike. <laughs> so get some cameras hung up so we can document all this stuff for you, but we're gonna get thrashing. All right, so Mike is working on the uh, little brake tabs, clips for the axle line. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Okay guys, so you can see we've got just a stock style rotor. Obviously it's super surface rusty, but we've also got a new caliper. I'm gonna throw the brake pads in here. Go ahead and get the line attached to it or the hose attached to it. And we'll start kind of tearing this apart so we can access the bag and put a new airline port in the top of it and get it repositioned. Mike, what are you doing? Putting the other side of this brake line together. Sweet, getting that thing flared up. Oh, hell yeah, Mike just got big on it. Sweet. All right guys, so if you'll remember, we put all this together really quickly before we went to C10 Fall Revival. That's been back in the fall. Well, we're now, uh, trying to get some of this stuff corrected from us just throwing it together so quickly. So I've actually got to go get some longer studs for the ball joint here because the ones that came with it are just way too short. <laughs> We're gonna pull this down, replace the airline fitting in the top of the bag, replace the line so we can move this thing around. Kind of tearing this apart, doing brake lines. We're gonna do the steering and we're just gonna completely button up the whole chassis today and make sure that it's gonna be ready to go 12 hours to Texas. So we've got the straight fitting in the top of the bag that runs up in the cross member. Obviously we just threw that in there to get us to fall revival and we needed one with a 45. So we've got that over here. So we're gonna throw that in and then rerun these lines up front. So that's why you're seeing us tear all this stuff apart if I haven't made that clear. So we're basically taking the whole front suspension part apart, buttoning it back up and putting it back together uh, while Mike works on these brake lines. Yeah, boy. So you can see Mike's getting the uh, brake line mocked up with the junction block up front. So he's got that line running all the way over, obviously to the frame where we've got this new hose coming out. A fabricator, a fabricator, complaining about getting dirty. This guy. It's bull crap. How's it doing dirty garage? So Mike, what are you up to over here? I'm drilling this big hole in this cross memory so we could put this little bulkhead fitting in there for the airline so do the thing here we're finally getting all this squared this away go that way so mike's drilling a hole in the back of the cross member to put a bulkhead in so we can continue running the airline back yeah yeah so if you remember when we were putting this thing together for the c10 fall revival the bolts were too short on the ball joint so mike actually ran got us some grade 8 hardware to put in there Got that all cinched down, so now we're good to go. Just another thing checked off the list. We're still waiting on this control arm to come back from Michigan Metalworks, so we're still using this DJM arm, but we'll do the same there. Ooh. Oh yeah, so, oh, look, at, look, I'm getting fancy. Get fancy with it. My hand model now. Hi, my name's Mike. No. So this fitting is designed to go through something, like a piece of metal or a wall or whatever the hell. Anyways. Normally, you'd see a lot of people would run a line through a frame or something. They put a grommet on it, or you know, some kind of protector to keep the line from getting abraded or anything like that. So you just put this in there, get a little nut on here, tighten it down, run your line into one end, line out the other end. Comprende? Mm -hmm. Nice, clean install. 
Let me grab this camera. Mm -hmm. That's what we should have done to begin with. <clears throat> yeah. See, it's looking nice in there. Then we'll come out here with the 90, go over the cross member to the other side, and it'll look real nice and clean. Mm -hmm. We're kind of redoing some of the work that we did previously, as I mentioned before. C10 Fall Revival, we're actually getting this right. So we got the proper fitting inside the top of the bag. We got the proper 90 uh, fitting here. So now, as you just saw, Mike installed that bulkhead. You can see the hole that he drilled right there. And there's the bulkhead coming in. So we're gonna put this nut on it now and then run our poly line in here. But while we were getting ready to do this, Mike was mentioning, and those of you who've had airbag suspensions probably know this, but you wanna make sure that you cut this line straight so that it doesn't have any sort of burr or any uh, imperfection there on the end so that it'll seal correctly in the push lock. So this is not the what way want. <laughs> you want it. This You always want like a nice, clean, straight cut. You don't want a 45, you don't want a 10 degree, you want it straight. No. And they do sell little, like in, almost anywhere where you buy air ride parts from, will sell little tiny cutters for tubing, and I think they're like two bucks. Yeah, and so worth buying. Yeah, it will save your ass, because if you put this thing in here and it looks like that, it's gonna rip the O-ring in the fitting, and not only do you have to go in fix the leak but now you got to buy a new ten dollar fitting yeah because you ripped the o-ring because you didn't have a two dollar cutter yeah makes sense all right well let's get this rascal installed so we can button up this front okay so you can see up in there how the line runs out of the top of the bag and into the bulkhead Man, that is just looks like a lot better, a lot better setup than what we had before. So, big thanks to Mike for getting that done. I know that's probably some pretty elementary type stuff when it comes to airbags, but that's what we needed. Easiest stuff we did. The choice still, y'all. I like the guy. I like it too, man. Stevie, the best. Stevie, huh? Uh, I like Emma. Just since we're name dropping. <laughs> so the end of day two, we've gotten quite a bit done. I know it probably looks the same on camera, but we've got all the rear suspension bolted up. We got the brake lines run. We are buttoning up the front. We've got, we basically went and redid all the front suspension. So we're sh we've shown you some of that, but essentially we made sure the bag was in the correct location on the, in the lower position. We went back and re-ran the lines. Mike put a bulkhead fitting in for air management system, which we'll be doing next week. So got some metal shavings down in there, but we now have a line on a, that's coming out of a 90 degree fitting at the top of the airbag, rolling through the cross member and coming out the back. And then it's gonna run, everything's gonna run right up this, this frame rail here. And what we're probably gonna end up doing is hard lining all that. So you can see, we've just kind of got this brake line still mocked up here because what we decided to do was leave it like that till we get the body on. So we can then, we'll then have to pull it back off to make sure that everything gets up to the master cylinder. All right, which is why that line right there is up. So we're gonna come back in tomorrow, button up some more things, start putting on the steering. And then I think we're like waiting on parts. So we've got air management coming in this week. We've got fuel line kit coming in this week. And we're thinking we're gonna set the body in about, I don't know, six days from here. Just as long as we continue to get everything in. So we'll see you tomorrow, back on the same project. Cue the music.